Hi, welcome to the Southern Living Magazine Idea House. We were so fortunate to be asked to participate in this project, doing all of the planters and pots throughout the house, inside and out, and it's just turned into some kind of gorgeous project. I'm sitting here on the front porch contemplating and thinking, and um, just wanted to kind of share with you the concepts of Michael Carr, how I built the company, why I built it, and which directions to go and all. When I first started out more than 20 years ago, you know, I had to have a business plan. I had an opportunity, but I had to come up with, a, you know, where, what direction do we want to go? And I did not want to be a company that worked everything off a of price, trying to get everything the cheapest way. So I wanted to provide a really high-end look, a high-end product with great customer service and something that showed new and innovative things all the time. So I actually did everything myself. Instead of using trading companies or people overseas to do certain things, I actually traveled. I actually spent months during the year overseas. I am the guy that went to the factories. I am the guy that built the relationships and tried to teach them what I was thinking and listen to them as well because they've been in the business for 80 something years. We kind of worked as a partnership. By taking out all of the individual middle people, I was able to do what I hope you, you consider a very high end, top end type of product, but still something that most people can afford. And, uh, but at the same time, it's, it's good enough to last for years and years and years. You can, some of these pieces, you can leave it to your kids or grandkids. So it's important to do it right. The next step is I had to be different and I had to be unique because there's always people out there trying to sell pots and planters, just like other products and such. So how do you stand out? I thought I would make my mark in, again, being different, something you haven't seen before, not just going overseas and, and buying something a factory's made and then you just pick it off a shelf. So I dug down, I, I studied trends, I studied color trends and design trends where whether it's gonna be a, a more of a modern or a classic look and somewhere in between. So when I first started, be honest with you, uh, you talking about raw, I was very raw. My first, my first uh, group of things was actually a palette A and a palette B. From there, I've learned, I've uh, experimented, uh, researched. Uh, I've gone from those two collections to now over 10,000 offerings in our 22,000 square foot showroom there in Atlanta. I think I've come up with over 120 different colors and texture options over the years. Obviously some of them are still here, but some have gone by the wayside, but that's how I try to keep ourselves fresh and almost like a uh, fashion business. I just don't want to be stuck, or, or I don't want my customers to feel like they can't get something new year after year after year, just like you would outfits and things like that. If you bought it last year, you loved it, but when you go back to the store again this year, you want something new. What draws you in is the new and creative and innovative stuff, and that's what I want Michael Carr to be, not just in pots, but we're uh, also uh, designed and moving toward outdoor living altogether. Like I said, I had over 10,000 designs, and each year in my catalog, which is now 400 pages, I try to take 40% of that out and add 40% more in. And that, that's very, very difficult to do every year. I don't think I can ever come up with something new. You know, I try to think, okay, how do I create a pot, or, or something that nobody's seen? Because pots have been around for thousands of years, right? Uh, very classic looks. And um, so sometimes I take a new design. And for instance, this one, particular one right here, all I did was I took a kind of an egg pot and just kind of spread it out a little bit. I call this a full figured piece. Round shapes kind of comes out from the edge. Again, from the egg pot, then I kind of created its own little base right here. And then I put a rim around the top and it kind of frames the whole piece. This one's kind of a low piece. Then I, then I create a lot of things that are more vertical, kind of stretch this out, make it kind of elongated. And now you've got a piece that's tall and a little piece that's short. And then inside of that, we actually make sets because people have different uses depending on where you want to put them. If you want to add a design element to that, I'll take this same pot and just put little ridges in it. You know, I added ribs to it. And then that same piece looks totally different. Another cool piece, but one person may like it compared to that. Some people like the pot very simple and let the plant stand out for you. Some people like that pot to really talk to you as well. So that's the one that has kind of more of a design element to it. Then I have another one that I call a volcanic look and it gives kind of an old world lava look. It really gives an interesting look to it. So you've got a really old world texture here and then you've got that classic smooth glaze on the bottom. 
but after that, you change it up by adding color. We do this particular piece in red, and cobalt blue, a light creamy color, a darker creamy color, a glossy black, a uh, falling green, which is really hot. Falling green and falling brown both is a real trendy thing right now. It's, uh, it goes and comes, and right now it's very, very hot with those neutral and earthy colors. Usually about 13 to 14 different glazes. That's not paint. Glazes, you just can't go to a store and buy a certain color. Our glazes, it takes uh, 12 to 14 different ingredients, right, to make it up. And then sometimes those same ingredients, depending on how you put it together, gives you another color. And sometimes how you apply that glaze onto a piece gives it a different, different color, different shape, and different tone. And really the more complicated way is these pieces are fired uh, up to 2,300 degrees over several days. Depending on how you fire it, how do you get to that 2,300 and how do you get back down to zero? Sometimes you stop at certain temperatures, sometimes you go up quicker, and how long do you leave it up there and how long do you start bringing it back down? It's a lot of experiments. For instance, this color right here, this white, I was approached by a pretty good sized group of uh, garden centers and they said, Michael, how do you have anything that's just white, white, white? Um, because everything we're getting from over there is kind of a smoky white, you know? We want something that pops white. Well, I spent almost three years experimenting how to get that white color. As a matter of fact, that's kind of one of the reasons we're here at this, this idea house. The designer really went heavy with whites. It fits the motif of this house. So this particular white, I really feel like we have the best white in the business, right? The white was a challenge, but when you see this, you can, you know, when you want a white, it just pops. And I, I, I could go on and on. But I wanted you to hear the whole story and I wanted you to understand how when you see Michael Carr on the label here, what's behind that and appreciate you listening and I hope you learned something and uh, I really, really appreciate you guys.